Now that Dragon's Dogma 2 has been out for a while and its first patch arrived on March 29th, we have a better understanding of the game's problems and how they can potentially be improved. Still, performance issues on all platforms are not the only thing I want to talk about here in this segment covering PC, as I also want to talk about user experience. And like all of my PC videos, let's first start with just getting into the game. When you first start the game, there is a shader pre-compilation process, which took around two and a half minutes on a Ryzen 7 7800X3D. This is great to see, and in practice, I do not think I encountered any super obvious shader compilation stutter where I could easily point at it and say, yes, that frame time increase was definitely shader compilation. That is a good thing, but that does not mean the game is stutter free. When playing the game, the opening chapter had around two moments where I was scratching my head based upon really big frame time stutters that I saw on the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. They were inexplicable and jarring. They made the game grind to a halt momentarily and I'm not sure what caused them. Like other previous RE Engine games on console and PC, there is also a little bit of stutter when crossing invisible boundaries in the game world. This is known as traversal stutter. Here's a good example when leaving the first camp in the game. Every time I just about crest this tiny hill here, when leaving the camp, I see a frame time spike of either 33, 50, or 66 milliseconds on the Ryzen 7800X3D. Slower processors will see these spikes more often and they will be bigger. On a technical level though, I would say these frame time spikes from traversal stutter happened less often than I've seen in previous RE Engine games. Beyond those things though, and the city performance, which I will get into shortly, I would say the game has smooth enough performance in the countryside when just killing goblins and stuff. There are some other user experience things I want to mention here, and the first is that the menus in these Capcom games on PC are still not great. The menu navigation is once again kind of head scratching and I'll show you what I mean. Look at this area here in the menu. With a mouse, I cannot click on the things that I see here, even though they're plainly visible right in front of me. To actually access them, you have to click the total menu option above them in the tree, and then you can click the sub options. This design doesn't make any sense on a mouse, which is a 2D pointer. I find this stuff irksome and it makes needless friction in all the Capcom titles I've seen on this engine. But enough of that user experience stuff, now let me get into the big controversial thing. This game is very CPU limited in its performance. When you get near populous areas, performance goes down, way down. Now I would say in and of itself this is not bad if a game is especially ambitious, but I need to make a point about why it feels so rough. If frame rate in a game goes down but frame times are similar to one another, the motion is less detailed and there are less frames to see in motion, but it should at least look and feel consistent. I just covered Horizon Forbidden West and the PC version there when CPU limited still has really good frame times that are consistent. In this game that is not the case, when the frame rates go down down near the city in this game, the frame times become erratic. And so no matter what your average frame rate may be, 30, 60 FPS, whatever, the game still doesn't look smooth. Your average frame rate isn't important here. What your frame times look like is. On a 7800X3D, for example, when trying to target 60 FPS with VSync, it is never consistent and good feeling 60 FPS VSync there. That is because the frame times are erratic, spiking up constantly to around 30 or 50 milliseconds. Here I imagine the AI load is the primary issue here, along with the density of the city. We know the CPU is the culprit here due to how GPU utilization goes down heavily when the frame rate is dipping and when the frame times start to become more erratic. So as you can see, a really big CPU like the 7800X3D does not present this game in a visually smooth way at all in the city. On something smaller like a Ryzen 5 3600, I have noticed that the core spread of utilization is pretty good when running around the city in this little benchmark I made at max settings. You can see some pretty good utilization spread there. On the Ryzen 7 7800X3D though, I would say the spread of the utilization is less uniform and more wild and changing all the time as some threads peak in the 70s while others go idle from the user perspective. The game appears to scale fine on more limited pools of cores and threads as shown on the 3600, but the spread of load on the 7800X3D does look less than stellar and I imagine there could be improvement there over time potentially to make the game less single threaded in that aspect. 
Performance-wise, using the latest patch that has come out on the 29th of March, we can see the 7800X3D running this benchmark sequence around 80% better than the Ryzen 5 3600. The overall performance is better, but the most important part is actually that the frame times are better. It's easy enough to see that on the bottom right in the frame time graph there, where that 7800X3D has much less erratic frame times and frame time spikes that are less dramatic than the Ryzen 5 3600. I would still say the 7800X3D though doesn't have great results here in this benchmark I'm showing. All those frame time spikes above 20, 30, and 50 milliseconds will be obvious and will be negatively affecting the game's fluidity. As I just mentioned, this is performance using the patch, so how much better is it now than it was at launch? Using my archived benchmarks, we can see that the Ryzen 5 3600 has an average frame rate increase in the benchmark of 7%, which is not too great. But if you look at the frame times on the bottom right, you will see a marked improvement. It's not good at all, I would say, but the amount of frame time spikes has decreased as has their length. So the game will present more smoothly than at launch by a visible margin, although it still overall will present unsmoothly in comparison to other games as the frame times are still poor. On the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, we see a smaller 4% boost in overall performance and average frame rate versus my original bench with this new patch. Like the Ryzen 5 3600, we can also see less erratic frame times and an overall improvement to those frame times with the latest patch. The frame times have less obvious spikes in them, though they are still not good, just better than they were at launch. So city performance here is going to be very controversial, and I think many people might just stop playing the game as soon as they get to this area, as it's kind of jarring. The entire game is of course not this city environment, but it is something that stands out for sure. An aspect that complicates performance in the city in this game is that the performance on the CPU is worse at higher resolutions. That is counterintuitive, but let me show you. Here at 4K, we can see the game when CPU limited is nearly 10% slower on average than 1080p while CPU limited. I have seen this in games in the past, like Crisis for example. I imagine the game is drawing more things at a distance at higher resolutions which makes the game heavier at higher resolutions on the CPU. This is interesting as it means Xbox Series X or PS5 are going to be especially hit as they are targeting high resolutions like 4K with weak CPUs. Beyond this, I don't think there's too much to report in this version of the game at this time. I find the game generally graphically competent and I like the ray trace GI it has. Though I am very surprised not to see competent RT reflections here, as that was mentioned in the advertising for the game on the NVIDIA blog. Based upon what I'm seeing with the reflections in this game, it just looks like screen space reflections with a very rudimentary fallback that looks like a Q map. Perhaps more complex reflections were axed before release, just like frame gen which might have been axed before release, as yeah, the game currently doesn't support frame gen, DLSS3 or FSR3. Performance is definitely going to be the thing that people are going to be talking about here, and my recommendation at the moment is to maybe wait to play the game to see what patching does. As we can see with the CPU load between different processors, there could be some work done here to improve the utilization of 8-core or other larger processors, and perhaps that will help the situation on PC even more. If you do not want to wait, you can of course just categorically ignore the performance in the city and just play in the countryside having fun. 